by music. Did you know that? God heals by music. God heals by love. God heals by medicine. God heals by prayer. God has many ways of healing. Depends on what type that you need. Sometimes a little love stretched out will just cure an old sore, an old place that's been a grudge or something. It'll heal it right over. Just a little love, a little care. Sometimes when you feel all down and as we call it a street expression, down the dumps, see? Just put on one of those tapes, that music or record, and go to play, and the first thing you know, you're patting your foot or your hand, and it's all over then. You're right up and ready to go again. Now, healing is an act of faith, and faith can't, cannot rest itself upon the shifting sands of man's theology but it can only rest upon the unmovable rock of God's eternal word. Therefore, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. And divine healing is not something that's just a, oh, a totem pole or a hocus pocus. It's a divine truth written in the Word of God, confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And it's not limited to any denomination, people, creed, color. It's to whosoever will, just as salvation is. It is a, a product of a finished work that we receive by faith in the great vicarious suffering and triumph resurrection of the Lord Jesus. If you had met God's requirements has been made or met, and you have fully considered it, and you have done everything that God required you to do, then your faith rests right there that He is. Be certain of God. You know, He loves to test us. He loves to see the reaction of your faith. Did you know that? God likes to see how you react. When you say, Oh Lord, I believe you, thou art my Savior. I believe that you are the healer. I believe that you are the one who gives the Holy Spirit. And the things that I am requiring, you are the God who gives that. And then when you confess all your sins and promise God what you'll do if he'll let you get well. And then because it don't happen, you run off like a coward somewhere. God can't use that. There's no way for him to use you. There's no way for him to answer you because he only answers by faith. Then all of a sudden, you go away and he can't answer you. 
but real truth faith stands there being sure that God is. He's certain that He is. The devil cannot create nothing. The devil only perverts. He can't create, he perverts. And first he has to have a way. Ask the doctor. If your body was perfect and like God made it in the beginning, it would be impossible to get sick. But the devil has to find a weakness. Somewhere to pervert. That's the same thing with your soul. Reason you don't believe in divine healing? The devil found a weak spot in you. And he perverted it. God is the healer. And we're offsprings of God. Sons and daughters of God believing just like our father believes. Notice. This little cell. It was a bruise. And then a life come in that little bruise. The cell backslid. That's a big word for a Baptist to say, isn't it? But you do it anyhow. And it backslid. And the devil put a germ in there called cancer, tumor, whatever it may be. And they begin to develop cells. And he begins to suck on your blood. And that's what he does. He eats you up by pulling your blood. Now, what does the doctor do? The doctor cuts that out. If there's one little speck left, it'll live on. Now, divine healing doesn't deal so much with taking away that growth. Divine healing deals with the devil that's inside of it. The germ, the lie. Now, say, some of you ladies tomorrow, what if the express agent would come down to your house and say, how do you do, are you Miss John Doe? Yes. Well, I have something here for you. And you look at it, it'd be a great big box full of rattlesnakes. Well, what a present. There's your name tacked on them. These are yours. Are they? In one sense, they're yours. In another sense, they're not. Now you say, I don't want them. Well, they're yours. Your name's on them. Well, that's one way it's yours. But still, it isn't yours to you sign for it. And if you don't sign for it, you'll have to take it back. You might see all your symptoms. The devil says, here it is. Here's your cancer. Here's your heart trouble. Here's your crippled condition. Refuse to sign for anything the devil brings. You'll have to take it back. Say, I refuse to have it. I just won't have it. No, sir. He'll have to take it back in the name of the Lord. If you believe it and confess it and say, I accept Jesus Christ as my healer, there's no affliction or disease can stay on you. Stay right with it. But the first time that you get weak and say, well, yes, I've still got it, then you drop right down to where you was at. You sign for it, then tuck it back. Say, yes, Mr. Devil, I, I have it back. Oh, brother, you stand right there as, as long as there's a breath in your body and say, I refuse to have it. I refuse to have it. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Hallelujah. That's it. That's right. Show the devil what you're made out of. You're born again by the Spirit of God, and you don't have to bow down to his images. They're out there say, I don't want your stuff. Well, here's your name on it. The doctor said, I don't care what he said. I know what God said. Get away from here with him. That's right. That's the way to treat him. Hand it back. Now, when you receive the inspiration that Jesus Christ died for your sickness, it's that very hour that your healing has come. Right. When you receive from heaven that Jesus died for your sins and you have accepted it, you don't need any prayer for you then. You've already accepted it. It's settled. Now we can preach the word, explain the word, but you have to receive the word. Oh, hallelujah. That's what sets it afire, brother. When you receive it, the revelation, something slips out of the unseen world yonder, comes rolling down through a mystical uh, channel somewhere into your soul. It says, now I see it. Your eyes brighten. Your lips that hung down straighten up and smile. Every muscle in your body seems to rejoice. Something's going to happen. Something. You don't need to be in a prayer line then. You've got it then. Night are on hospital beds and afflictions, and the only thing that can help them is the lovely Lord Jesus, and they're afraid to give him a test to try. 
Amen. That's right. And as the water pushed on, after a while, Jesus spoke and said, Be not afraid, it's I. Peter said, If it's you, Lord, give me just a little test. And he asked, and you shall receive. <laughs> so he gave him the test. And when he tried to do it in himself, he failed, and every other man will fail. He got his eyes off of Jesus, and they could look how big the waves were. When he seen the waves were contrary, he began to sink, and every man that will look at his affliction after being prayed for is sure to sink. You don't look at your affliction, you keep your eyes on the promise giver, the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on his word. He's the one who promised. He watches over to perform it. He keeps it in the hollow of his hand. In the depths of his heart, it's bedded. His word has to be true. Get your mind off your sickness, off your trouble. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, to you that's sick and afflicted, you that needs prayer for your body, if you need prayer for your body, he's your healer. How do I get it, Brother Branham? Well, here's how you get it, by believing. Everything that God could ever do for you, he did it at Calvary in Christ. Do you believe that? Amen. Jesus said it's finished. You say, Brother Brandon, did he save me then? Certainly. I beg your pardon. I was just saved five minutes ago. No, no. You were saved 1,900 years ago. You just accepted it five minutes ago. That's how see. You accepted it. Just like I say, here's the Bible. Take it. You just let it there. there. It's yours. But you've got to take it first. You've got to accept it. When you accept it, there's nothing you can do. You can't merit one thing. If my tie was crooked, and I say, here, I'm going to give you a million dollars, you say, I'll straighten up your tie. There you are, Brother Branham. I'll give you that because you give me a million dollars. Then I'll never give you a million dollars. See? You've done something to earn it. So there's not a thing you can do to earn it. You just have to accept it. That's the same thing about divine healing. You know, to, I see people get all worked up and try to get nervous and say, oh, if I could just... You know, well, you go plumb over the top of it. You leave it behind you. Going out there excited and trying to reach for something when it's right here by you. Just simple. Just say, thank you, Father. You promised it to me. I now receive it. And that's all. <coughs> Watch what happens. I mean it in your heart. Just keep saying it over and over. Say, if you don't believe it all together, keep saying it until you do believe it. Just keep saying it over. I thank you, Lord, for my healing. Because what is he? Christ is the high priest of our confession. Is that right? Yeah. Hebrews 3. Or he's the high priest of our confession. Then he cannot do one thing for you. You can make no intercession until first you confess that it's done. Now, is that scriptural? High priest of our confession. Then he can only act when we confess. That's the trouble with man tonight. That's what's the trouble with people tonight. You're scared. That's the biggest curse there is on the full gospel people or any other people is because they are afraid. God has made the provision, but you're afraid to take his word for it. If you was, wasn't afraid tonight, why you would take your healing by faith and know that God promised it and the thing would just go plumb away from you. Afraid, scared. And I've noticed it. And that's the reason I'm such a believer in healing. I know that if you can get away from that scare and get love in its place, something's going to happen. There's only two faculties that govern a human, and one of them is, is faith, which brings results, and the other is fear, which has no value in it at all. Faith is of God. Fear is of the devil. Fear makes you weary. Fear makes you wonder. Israel was promised a promised land, but they had to fight for every inch of it. Wherever the soles of your foot treads upon, that have I given you, God said to Joshua. It was all there. The land was there and God gave it to them, but they must fight for it. The same way it is about divine healing. God's got the power to heal you if you've got the courage to accept it but you'll fight every inch of the way. God's got amazing grace to save you, and He will do it, but you'll fight every inch of your way. With the King of Kings, you cannot be too little. He sees every move you make. 
He knows all that's in you. He not even the spare that falls in the street without him knowing it. Not a little flower could come up, a little crocus, unless he knows about it. So how much more are you than the flower? And if you're laying here sick or afflicted, do you not know that the king of kings is watching you? Do you not know that he's interested in your healing and in your welfare? You may be ever so sinful, but did you know he's interested in you becoming his subject? You say, but I'm just an insignificant person. But you're not in the sight of God. God wants you. He loves you. And God so loved you that when his love was projected, sovereign grace taken its place and sent a Savior to redeem you back to himself. And in this Savior, he was wounded for our transgression because God loved you. And God saw the afflictions of his people and with his sight you were healed. God raised making a way for his love required it. And when his love projected his feelings, Christ stepped out to take his place. It required something to take the place. His love alone went for you. And grace provided a sacrifice for you. Now you're only to ask to believe it. Many of you people have faith in your doctors, and you should have if you've got a doctor. And now when something gets wrong with you, you'll go to that old faithful doctor that you believe in. That's what you should do. That's good. And then you submit your case to him. If he says you should go to the hospital, you don't do a thing but go home and pack up your clothes and take off to the hospital. Sure, you got faith in the doctor. And if he doesn't decide that you want to go to the hospital, or you should go rather, he'll write out a prescription and he'll give you a sack full of pills. And you'll swallow them. And you don't know what's in those pills. But you've got faith in your doctor. How about God? And you're scared to swallow some of the gospels that he gives you. Amen. By his stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Swallow it and see what happens. Amen. It's a confidence. You show what confidence you have in your doctor by taking his medicine that you don't know what it is. You show your confidence in the doctor by submitting yourself to an operation that proves your confidence in the doctor. But when it comes to Christ, you're scared to take him at his word. How is it? Faith is the victory. Amen. You could submit your case to Jesus Christ tonight just as you submit your case to the doctor. Give me anything you want to, Lord. Amen. You're the doctor on the case. Amen. Amen. Then you've got the victory. Amen. Then you've got faith that overcomes. And when I have faith that God is going to keep his word, though I'm not healed at the present time, I know God has plenty of healing power and I've got the faith to bring it to me. I'm just as happy with the faith that says you're going to get well as you would be if you were sounding well at that minute. It makes no difference because you've already possessed it. 
faith is a substance, not a make-believe, but you're holding, not in your hand, but in the possession of your heart. You have the purchase power of your healing. If Satan tries to hand you some of this stuff like sickness, you know what you do? Just show him the token. I am a purchased product. My healing has been paid for. I am a product of God because I have the token of the Holy Ghost. You cannot keep me off of this highway. You cannot keep me from my health. I present the token and show you that my by his stripes I was healed. Here's the resurrection of Jesus Christ right in me now to prove it to you. Oh, there's a real thing. Lord Jesus, in the way of humility, in the way of humbleness, I offer you this congregation that's on their feet. I offer it to you because they have stood in response to the call. They're seeking deeper things. They're seeking more life. After hearing that the blood of Jesus so thoroughly cleanses, that there's no more nothing, that the complete Word of God rests within them, that the very command of their own voice is creative power, because in them is the Holy Ghost. And this Holy Ghost is a creator. He makes things come to pass because he speaks the Word. And the Word spoken becomes God in action. And Lord, I pray that you'll send the Holy Ghost upon every one of them just now. And deliver unto them, Lord, in the power of the resurrection of Christ, the things that they're desiring in their heart. A better life. The baptism of the Spirit. Lord, may it be so that this audience will be illuminated. The hearts of the people will see the vision and be filled with the power of God. I command them to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ.